On August 13, 1989, Annette and Rolf Kaiser spent hours carefully sneaking across fields close to Hungary's western border with Austria. The couple from communist East Germany wanted to flee their homeland and cross into the west. You couldn't do anything spontaneously. They did all your thinking for you. As long as you went along, everything was fine. But heaven forbid you should go against the flow. Then you could be detained and taken away in the middle of the night. And then you just disappeared. The Kaisers traveled to Hungary with their daughter, Juliet, and pretended to be ordinary holidaymakers. Like other East Germans, they had heard that gaps were beginning to open up in the Iron Curtain between Hungary and Austria. But while looking for a crossing point, they ran into a patrol of Hungarian soldiers. All of a sudden, they were standing there. We simply turned ourselves in. What else could we do? They all had guns. Weeks earlier, on May 2nd, Hungarian soldiers began dismantling the barbed wire fence along the border and opening crossings to Austria in the west. It sparked hope for many that the Iron Curtain might finally be starting to crumble. But soldiers continue to patrol and observe movements from watchtowers overlooking the border area. Miklos Nemet was the Hungarian prime minister at the time and had negotiated an agreement with Moscow to begin demolishing the border security zone. Gorbachev. When I told Gorbachev about my plans, he said, to my surprise, that each country was individually responsible for its border. But what I was really worried about was that there were certain forces within the Soviet Union working to topple Gorbachev. Our intelligence agency had already passed along information to us that the Soviet leadership was turning against Gorbachev. But in Hungary, too, there were those opposed to opening the border. Sándor Goyak used to be a border guard. Nowadays, he shows tourists the barbed wire fence in an open-air museum. He says many officers were against the openings and that ordinary soldiers believed in the communist ideology. We were taught that those trying to flee were criminals. Many of us didn't realize that most of them were honest people who just wanted to escape for political reasons. For many of us, they were simply breaking the law. After being caught while trying to flee, the Kaisers were taken to the Hungarian city of Sopron. They were interrogated all night long by police and then released. But the family could not return to East Germany since authorities had already been alerted. So they tried again, this time along this forest trail. And then suddenly guards appeared. The Kaiser tried to run and came under fire. They shot at us. We don't know if they were aiming for us or shooting in the air. You don't turn around, you just run. We wanted to get out of danger. We had our child with us. Naturally, as parents, you want to protect your child. So we just ran. But then Annette Kaiser stumbled over a rock and hurt herself so badly that she couldn't run anymore. We were completely at our wit's end. It was our second attempt. We didn't know what would happen to us next, whether or not they would deport us back to East Germany. We thought our luck couldn't possibly get any worse. It had all gone terribly wrong. But a sympathetic border officer ordered Annette Kaiser to be taken to hospital in Schopron. Her injured leg was put into a cast and she had to stay in bed for a couple of days. And that's when a man from West Germany came into the story. I remember it just like it was yesterday. It was Wednesday, and an older man came to my bedside. It was afternoon. He said he would help us, but it would cost us a thousand Deutschmarks a person. That would mean three thousand Deutschmarks. I said, we can't start over in the West in debt. And then I told him, there's the door. Meanwhile, the number of East Germans going to Hungary to try to cross the border was steadily growing. Some of them came up with the idea of a mass exodus while having a picnic along the border. 
On August 19th, the border gates were suddenly lifted. East Germans could cross over into the West in plain view of border guards. The events made news around the world and were enabled with the tacit support of the Hungarian government. My plan was to test whether Gorbachev's claim about every country being responsible for its own borders was really sincere. If nothing happened, then he was serious. But if there had been any interference on that day during the picnic, then history would have taken a different course of events. Over the days that followed, the situation remained tense along the Austrian-Hungarian border, and shots were fired. From a different hill, I could see 30 or more people trying to flee, and then suddenly a group of soldiers appeared. They fired shots into the air, and then most people surrendered and were detained. The Kaisers made their third escape attempt on August 19th. With a car left behind by East Germans who had already fled, they drove to the border where Austrians had already cut a hole in the fence. First I took the child over the barbed wire and then my wife with her cast. I carried her all the way to here. There was a gap in the fence here and we crossed over quickly. Everyone on the other side was calling out, come on, quick. It was such a relief. It was great. The next day, the Kaisers traveled from Austria to West Germany. In the weeks that followed, thousands did the same. The Iron Curtain was no more. <laughs>